what you know about Plock. Damn, listen to this. It came out in 1993. Listen how hard this song goes, bro. Hey everybody, Zenny's back with another installment of Figure Collection Show Off Week. I go over my figure collection while giving off some useful tips and tricks for collecting, like where to purchase from, woes, do's, don'ts, and maybe even some cool bug facts. Last time I went over my Nendroid collection, which I will link at the end of the vid. So that means this time we are looking at my Figmas, or posable figures. You know, action figures, the one with the moving arms and legs, and the, the karate chopping action, and the realistic voice activator that has five different phrases, including, it's turbo time! Okay, maybe not that last one. Actually, who was my first Figma? Oh, wait, not Figma, but 4-inch Nell by Sentinel. Nell. Is, is that a play on words? Sentinel. Sentinel. Nell. Everyone's favorite Mega Man from the game Mega Man Legends. I have many fond memories of playing this series way back on my PS1. It's kind of an unknown classic spin-off from the original side-scrolling series. I actually still have the first one on disc, uh, somewhere. Fun fact, Mega Man Legends was one of the first full real 3D games coming shortly after Mario 64. It's a great figure to start off my collection with, because this was around the time I started to get privy on collecting. What I'd like to do is visit sites like Otaku Mode or AmiAmi, etc. and just browse upcoming pre-orders. It's a good way to not only find stuff, but learn about brands and manufacturers and whose sculpting style you might be into. He was my first pre-order, actually. My gateway drug into this hobby. I love this game so much, and I would love to do some videos on them in the future. Next, as I briefed over in the Nendo video, Tracer from Overwatch was my favorite character to play as. She fit my frantic, head right into the enemy's line of fire playstyle perfectly. I got me a twofer deal on eBay. The seller had her Nendo and Figma bundled together at a stupid low price. They were both classified as NIB or MIT, basically unopened figures brand new in their boxes. But he was selling them at a used price. I don't normally like to buy figures off eBay, but uh, if you do, check out the seller and see if they have any other figs up for sale that can show if they are a collector or not. And fingers crossed, collectors do take care of their stuff and are more knowledgeable, so you can ask them questions. Let's go ahead and knock out the rest of the Overwatch crew. Diva, which I instantly accidentally broke into shortly after getting her. <sighs> Figmas do be fragile. Fragile, I did it again. This was the review where I started to find my style and get sort of comfortable on camera. I'll never be comfortable on camera. One of the more bulkier Figmas in my collection, what it says on the box, McCree, this may be my favorite Figma in my collection. Usually the more intricate a Figma can be, the more fragile and convoluted they can feel, where it gets annoying to swap out parts and accessories. But I think with how chunky this cowpoke is, he feels very sturdy and high quality. It was also an excuse for me to buy a cowboy hat and make a Western standoff video in my friend's backyard. <laughs> oh. Alright, what's next? Another one of my favorites is Mume from the anime Iron Fortress of the Kaminare. And if you're starting to get the gist, I got some pretty off the wall tastes in anime. Which is probably why my channel's so hidden. I don't really collect much mainstream or popular stuff. But collecting isn't what other people like. It's an extension of your preferences and what you have love for. She was another last minute pickup from Big Bad Toy Store as well. Also, shout out to USA Gundam Store and Right Stuff Anime. I've never used them, but those places are cool too. And probably better than BBTS. Japanese sites are still my favorite place to buy figs from, but if you have a favorite US or European store, make sure to shout them out in the comments. But anyways, she came with a ton of goodies, but like I mentioned with McCree, there's that complicatedness of tricky to swap out accessories, like her guns for example. It just makes her a total pain to pose. I should take more pics of her though, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with her. Oh my god, my first try! I, got, I haven't done that in years! Ah, the Notorious 2B from Near Automata. Or is it Automata? 
made by Bring Arts. After this one, I've been completely turned off by Square Enix's Bring Arts line. Their quality control is a mess. And what we really don't think about is the more technical side of posable figures, like how their joints work or how accessories are set up on them. This was actually their second take on Tubi because Bring Arts totally flubbed the first version of her, and she still is pretty shoddy at best. Her face molds are pretty bummy, all the plastic weapon holders are a nightmare to put together. She can barely stand up even with that big claw wrapped around her. Yeah, ever since I got this one, I've never wanted to risk getting another figure from Bring Arts. Man, I've got some pretty dumpy figmas. <laughs> Speaking of bad figmas, Megumin from Konosuba, still my worst figma. Thought this was a bootleg when I first got it, but nope. Everything is super loose and can pop off with the slightest touch. Her staff peg broke on me like way too easily. I set her up and I only took her out once for a fig ultra vlog and lost the best part of her, which was Chomsuke. If I move it in like the slightest way, her face and her hat will just crumble off of her and she'll just fall over off of her stand. Ugh. Of course, Konosuba is still an awesome anime, and yes, I did get more Megamine figures to make up for this crappy Figma. Really surprised Max Factory dropped the ball on this one. They so far are my favorite manufacturer of Figmas, and pretty much are the main guys making Figmas. I would say Good Smiles, pretty much the same quality as Max Factory. Freeing aren't too bad either, they usually do some pretty different stuff, like the Tabletop Museum. I still want that Moe head. Not too sure about Tomy Tech. I think they can be kind of iffy. And I don't see too much of Orange Rogue these days. Ah! There's two in a row. Shout out to Claire Redfield from Resident Evil Code Veronica, which truly needs a remake. This thing, this thing is ugly at sin, but Resident Evil Code Veronica is still one of my favorite Resident Evils, and when I seen this at Motor City Comic Con the other year, I had to get it. I, I actually talked the guy down a few bucks. Don't be afraid to ask about prices at cons. It won't hurt to ask. Usually the dealers are used to wheeling and dealing. Of course, as I've said multiple times before, the Resident Evil series is still one of my favorite ongoing sagas, in which case I would love to see some normal figmas of the characters. We did get one odd Nendo of Chris a while ago for some reason, and you will definitely be seeing more Resi and zombies from me in the future, splashing on my feet in some sort of capacity. While we're on the topic of spooky games and spooky characters, Red Pyramid Thing, or Pyramid Head from Silent Hill Dos, which was an Amazon purchase from a small comic shop somewhere in North Carolina or something. This time I used the shopping tab on Google Chrome to find it. And of course, that was right before they announced they were remaking this line. Luckily, I got them for a great price. Like I said before, do your research, go to My Figure Collection, keep an eye out for bootlegs, especially when you're buying from someone that's not an official seller. Check if they have actual photos of the box that they took themselves and are not just using stock images. If you're ever unsure about a site that you're buying from, uh, take Mercari for example, but look up reviews. Look up reviews on Google, go to Reddit or other figure collecting forums and just ask. You can pretty much get other people's past experiences. Overall, I am super happy to have them in my collection. Still one of my all-time favorite monster designs. I had a lot of nightmares featuring this guy and a lot of jumpy nights while playing this game in the dark. Might as well stick on the topic of favorites and do Southie Sturluson from do da 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 Did I do too many da's? My friend actually bought me this as a gift for being his best man at his wedding. <laughs> I guess he knew this was one of my favorite anime and one of the first ones which fully introduced me into watching anime. <laughs> hey! Makuman Kan Shoku! I picked her up because I gave up hope that I was never going to get an android of her. And Joke's on me because they did re-release that Nendo of her. If you've been keeping up with me, then you know regular characters in street clothing are my favorite for some reason. And I always thought Futaba Sakura's outfit was neat. It's the big jacket. Also, Persona 5 is an awesome game. Unfortunately, I missed her original run, so I went to my old standby, myfigurecollection.net, looked her up and added her to my wished collection. So when a private seller puts her up for sale, I get a notification. It's my favorite way to find figures that are out of stock everywhere else, or I want to find them cheaper in used condition. Everyone that I've interacted with has been friendly on there. They usually implore you to ask any question you'd like about the condition of the figure. A few good things to ask when buying used is if it's been removed from its box and displayed, if there obviously is anything missing or damaged. They usually make sure to note that in the description but maybe they will go into more detail for you. If it comes from a smoke-free home, and ask for the condition of the original box or if it still has the original packaging. Next is Haru Okumura, 
or no R. I just like that she came with a grenade launcher and a huge double-sided axe. I had to pass on the Good Smile bonus and the DX version, which was a table for sipping her tea at. I got a couple more for you, like Yusuke Kitagawa, or Voksu. <laughs> Another con pickup. Unfortunately, I couldn't talk down this vendor, but you damn well know I tried. Paid a little more for him, but it was tolerable. I'm not sure if I want to collect the whole gang. I think the only one that I really want is Joker in a Shujin Academy uniform, which I almost overpaid for once. I have a personal philosophy, is never overpay for Figmas or Nendoroids. They really have the highest chance of being reproduced as opposed to scales, for instance, which are sometimes even made to order. And good thing I didn't, because not too long ago he was put up on Good Smile's site. Listen, if you really, really, really want a figure, to check multiple sources and definitely don't pay ludicrous scalper prices. The Makoto Nijima Saga is finally over! I mentioned this a couple times in some other videos, this Figma was a nightmare to get. Almost exactly three years ago, I put in a pre-order for this Queen Figma at Big Bad Toy Store. People started getting her from uh, AmiAmi and other Japanese sites and posting pictures. I was like, okay, US stores usually take a little longer to get their shipments, that's fine. So a few months go by and still no Makoto. On their site, they just kept pushing her back and back. And then I even seen people online asking where they can find her at. She sold out everywhere. There were like a few sellers on eBay selling her for over $300. The, the sad thing is there were even people saying they PO'd her from Big Bad and never got her either. So my guess was Big Bad Toy Store never really got enough Makotos to go around. I'm thinking Japan gets priority over the US. It would have been nice to at least get an email from them, you know, a year after the pre-order had passed. But as I said earlier, fast forward two years later and they have another pre-order of Queen. And this time I angrily emailed them asking, hey, what's up? Am I getting her this this time? Of course, I get an email from them back basically saying, I don't know. But three years into the making, I finally have my Queen. And literally like, what, eight to six months later, I get an email saying they shipped her. And literally, the craziest thing, literally the day before I was trying to figure out how to cancel my pre-order, I was like, I held on to it for three years and it's like, okay, whatever, I'll just cancel it. I don't even want her anymore, <laughs> but I guess they auto charged me for it and sent it to me. So whatever. I think you might have to email them to cancel pre-orders from them. Most sites are actually pretty easy. I think HLJ, they literally have a bye-bye button on there. So was she really worth all that trouble? No! Third time's a charm. Nope, that was stupid. Floor popcorn. Never hurt anybody. Here's my Conti boy from FLCL. He's a little heavy because he has some die-cast metal in him. Oh man, I'm super stoked to have some more Fooly Cooly merch in my collection. It's pretty hard to come by these days. <laughs> there they are, best buddies, Spike and Vicious from Cowboy Bebop. These are actually SH figure art joints. Still waiting for Faye though. What's taking her so long, man? I love these ones though. They're super fun to pose. Ah, Spike was actually in my first Fig Ultra vlog. I'd say figure arts and Figma are pretty neck and neck in quality. I feel like figure arts are more for playing with. They're a little more sturdier and can be handled a bit rougher than a Figma can. And then he goes, I'm sorry, I am so sorry. Okay, this one, like I mentioned, there are simple Figmas and then there are s some complex figmas like Ichi from the Heavily Armed High School Girls line. <laughs> Dude, I was super stoked for this one. I've seen these girls before and always wanted one, but I never had the chance. The line of characters is awesome and she looked like super badass. <laughs> what? Motorcycle sold separately, you say? Credit card? Uh, you uh. got it. But this one is just a pain to swap faces. And clothes and accessories out and pose her on or off the bike, man. I, I like her and will do a review. I'm just <laughs> hesitant. I'm just dreading doing a full review of her. She do go ding, 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 ding. Oh. And last but not least, what the dog doing? We got that corgi drip. His name is Massage. I didn't come up with it. The company Mr. Z did. We had a blast in our show, figuratively speaking, looking at all these funny animal figures. I, I knew I had to get one. They're so funny and just plain cute. And corgis are my favorite dogs too. I want a black and white Welsh cardigan corgi. 
The ones with the tails. Oof, that corgi cake though. This was a fingers crossed kind of pre-order, which means I found them cheaper on eBay from a Chinese dealer, which goes against all my previous rules. But with a little research, I found out the company that makes these guys is a Chinese manufacturer. And the seller had a solid rating and like almost specifically sold these types of figures. But of course, a year later, I never got a message saying that they had shipped my corgi. So randomly one day, he just showed up on my porch. So there's that. But at least I got him. <laughs> I know I said I like characters in street clothing, but doges in street clothing? Now that's my new favorite thing. But that's my new favorite thing. But that's my new favorite thing. Hey, hey, that's it for the posables. Technically, I guess you can count Nendoroids as posable. <laughs> oh, I know my favorite thing about collecting Nendoroids and Vigmas is their boxes are always perfectly rectangular. <laughs> and are easy to stack. Look, one day I took every box out of my closet and reorganized it. I was able to stack them and make a little section just for them. That's a good tip. Always make room for boxes. I was hoping to get a little razor like I did when I got for my Nendos, but the little arms on their stands made it a tough fit. So I bought these little tables for them to stand on. All right, that's my Figma collection so far. Now it's time for the award show. Coolest gun, Mume. Biggest sword, Ishii. Most pissed off, vicious. Best boots, McGree. Spikiest hair, Spike. Loudest voice, Mako. Best hat, Futaba. Best mask, Pyramid Head. You don't want to know what's under there, trust me. Best jacket, Massage. A female character I don't want to get beat up by. Those ones. Ones that I wouldn't mind stepping on me. Okay, that completes day two of Collection Show Off Week. Be sure to shout out any cool bug facts in the comments. Or let me know who your favorite Figma was. And make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss the next part, which is my scale collection. There's a lot of fun stuff to look at there. Remember Cracker Jacks? What the hell are those? Ah! <laughs> so, much love. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I will see you next Friday. Now I'm going to go back to listening to the Plock soundtrack. I think it's killer.